Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. I I don't have anything to say to be honest. Let's start by saying I'm so sorry. Every year I make the resolution that I'm going to post more on YouTube and every year I have not done that. Thank you for staying subscribed. Time has just gone so fast where I thought I had so much time. Suddenly we're halfway through the year. I have so many videos on the back burner for you guys. I have my Paris vlog and I have just like a daily vlog and I just have random ones but I edited probably like half of them or I just talk so much much for the Paris vlog I edited up to 10 minutes of it for two hours and I realized I wasn't even in Paris yet I was just talking the whole time about random stuff it's summer now I'm on summer break Woo! so I have a lot more time to edit and film hopefully now because I have more freedom I'll be able to do different things this is kind of a newer segment I guess that I want to start on my channel I started doing this on my TikTok. if you didn't know my username is at Denise Kim says someone took Denise Kim says here on YouTube so so I can't use that one. So this one remains Denise Kim Sings and I please give it back to me. <laughs> It bothers me. I started that segment where I began giving insight about my K-pop experience and a lot of different things in K-pop in general. I decided that maybe I would just start doing them here on my YouTube channel because I think just somewhere that I'll be able to speak more freely and be more in-depth about a lot of things that I want to talk about without the time constraint. I also feel that YouTube is a little bit more of the calmer content. <laughs> platform where people are more open and willing to listen. The biggest reason for wanting to start this series is I think a lot of things about the K-pop industry are taken out of context and becomes in a way I guess almost very diluted where people will say things and then everyone will kind of take that as fact and there's no source, there's no proof, there's nothing really to back it up. I wanted to shed some light on some topics that I do know about and be able to kind of share my thoughts about it. Another reason why I wanted to make these videos was just to remind people Criticism can be really good when it's helpful, but I think there's a lot of people that just spread hate and in that way There's no basis behind it. There's no context. There's no nothing They just want to take one clip out of context and then roll with it and set their opinion on that I know obviously not everyone's gonna take time out of their lives to go in and do research But I think people are very very aggressive about something that they don't really know much about I want to just try and resolve some of those issues by giving insight and experience as an ex-idol and someone who's been in the industry before. This is a disclaimer that I'm gonna put in at the beginning of all of my videos where I talk about the industry. This is not targeting anybody. This is genuinely for, I guess, education purposes, just to give a lot of insight into the K-pop industry. This is not applicable to everybody and this is just me strictly speaking from my experience and my knowledge. For this video in particular, I also wanna just add a disclaimer that this is not applicable to all idols, like I said earlier. People are all different, all idols are different, and all companies are different, so this is just what I found from my experience happens to a lot of artists. And I'm not making excuses for anybody, I'm not saying cut them slack, I'm just saying be a little bit mindful, I think, whenever you're speaking to people on the internet or just posting comments in general. I hope you guys enjoy my first video of this series and if you guys enjoyed, please let me know and I'll try to make more like it. Leave me comments below about other things that you're curious about and if I can, I will hopefully try and get to them. Now let's move on to the video. I started doing these videos about my experience in the K-pop industry, I would say within the past year. I post these videos mainly on my TikTok. The thing is, since that is a short form, I wanted to start bringing that over to my YouTube channel because there's only so much that I can say in a short form video. I end up having to kind of prioritize the points that I think people need to hear the most. And in that way, it cuts out a lot of other things that I also feel are equally as important, but they get overlooked. So I wanted to come on to my YouTube channel and start doing these videos and in that way give insight into the k-pop industry and what it's like also for these videos i'll have all the products that i use listed below including my skincare and my makeup because i know that a lot of people are curious maybe i'll do an actual in-depth makeup routine if you guys want that and i know a lot of people have been asking for a full skincare routine i will do my best to get on that as soon as possible for today we're going to be talking about what I covered in one of the first videos that I uploaded, which is why idols get worse at singing after they debut. This is not always the case. I do also know a lot of idols that have gotten better as time progressed, but I feel that this has been a constant issue, especially on the internet with a lot of idols these days where people are criticizing their vocals, 
or it'll be somebody that performed pre-debut and people will compare their pre-debut videos to their recent vocals. This is something that I feel would be really helpful for people to hear from someone who was an idol and also is a singer and performer and has been singing for a very long time. I'm gonna go over some of the topics that I already covered in the video and go in a little more depth about it and the reasons as to why. First reason that I noted in my TikTok was that songs do not suit the artist. This includes the song's key, style. These are very important aspects where most of the times when an artist chooses a song or a song is chosen for someone who is just solely an artist and a singer, not an idol, a lot of the song will revolve around the artist's vocal abilities and what they are capable of. They want to highlight the best parts of the artist's voice. K-pop is different in the way where it's all about the concepts and it revolves a lot around what's trending. K -pop K-pop groups will do a lot of different concepts and that's kind of one of the things about K-pop. Sometimes they'll do a cuter concept or they'll do a more hard concept or they'll do like a retro concept. It's very different per artist but for the most part if you are a singer there is certain key and certain styles that you are accustomed to doing but for idols this isn't always something that is in their control. A lot of the times artists don't have much say about what songs that they do the company is more adamant on choosing songs that they feel will do well because I've mentioned this at the end of the day it's business so they have to sell when a song is not in a key that an artist is comfortable in it's gonna be hard to sing no matter what no matter how good the singer is but a lot of k-pop songs are on the higher end in terms of range and this is actually something that's really interesting because I'll tell you why just give me a second okay Great. Now that that's out of the way, a lot of it is because... I'll tell you why in a second. One more time. Okay. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. The reason why this is, is because certain songs, if they are in a certain key or I guess they hit certain frequencies, that may be the wrong term, they are more appealing to the ear and a lot more catchy when heard. This is why Nightcore or sped up versions of songs are really popular because of the fact that they catch in the ear very well. A lot of times these songs will be in a higher key because it just kind of sounds better. Unfortunately, this means that sometimes for the artists, this makes it very difficult for them to sing live. I'm sure there's a lot of discussion behind the scenes within the company around their choosing of a song, but a lot of the times from what I've seen, they tend to prioritize the performance and also marketability of a song over choosing a song that would suit the artist. Also it's hard since these are usually groups, the song can't just suit one person. Companies will sometimes think like oh they can just record it and then it'll be done and then they can practice before they start singing live or like I said before they just won't sing live or they'll just have a lot more backing track which is pretty normal actually. Lip syncing is pretty normal in the k-pop industry. They're not going on and singing live every single time. The reason why these pre-debut videos will sometimes sound a lot better is because it may be a style that the singer is more comfortable in. Reason number two is vocal health. I wanted to go more in depth about this because I think also a lot of people started to take what I said out of context. Keeping up with vocal health is actually, it's a lot. There's a lot of things you're actually supposed to do in order to maintain vocal health and there's a lot of things that are actually bad for your voice for example like dairy, caffeine those are some things you can't really cut out like I love milk and I love coffee and I love milk and coffee together there's like a give and take vocal health is so crucial especially if you're a singer where your body is very much your instrument but as you can imagine a lot of these idols are exhausted most of the times the hours are ridiculous where there's no clock in clock out time like a normal job if you had say an injury or you pulled a muscle and you went to like go do a full workout your body is going to get damaged and over time this damage will start to build up when you sing and you're really tired or your vocal health is not doing well a person's vocals will then kind of begin to deteriorate it also doesn't help that a lot of the times artists aren't given the chance to properly warm up before they sing and this is a really big problem because 
using the workout metaphor again you wouldn't do a full workout without stretching or warming up your body first warming up your voice is super integral and something that i definitely never skip and i significantly sound a lot better when i'm warmed up versus whenever i'm not and i'm just going straight out of the gate and raw dogging it whenever idols do music shows a lot of the times they share a waiting room with other artists there were a lot of instances for me whenever we'd be sharing a waiting room with someone or we'd be in the big waiting room where the only thing that's separating you guys is like a little partition i would start warming up my voice and i've been told that i need to be quiet because i need to be respectful to the people around me this isn't like just because like oh you're being too loud part of it is that sometimes but a lot of times it's because behind the scenes they're filming they're doing other stuff and you can't be hearing like in the back and you can't warm up before you get there because you are getting picked up usually like 3 a.m go get your hair and makeup done then you would go to whatever the place is that you're going to perform and then you'd be there and you'd be waiting until your call time and also vocal rest is something that's really important but they have to constantly be talking they have to constantly be talking to their managers a stylist greeting everybody because that is polite thing basically you have to greet everyone you say it's like Annyeonghaseyo. whatever group you are and you just have to go around and say that to every single person no matter how many times you see them especially if you're a rookie you're doing that you're filming content you're talking constantly because of that there's no time to rest vocally and also you're extremely tired so a lot of the times whenever you're not on stage you're sleeping like i was always sleeping until maybe like an hour or two before we had to go on so if you're not warming up and you're super tired all of these other things and your voice is just exhausted and your body is exhausted your voice will become affected very quickly i don't think i've ever spoken about this anywhere but there was a point in my career where i actually developed vocal nodules if you don't know what this is if you've watched pitch perfect there's a point where chloe i believe her name is they're like why do you suddenly suck at singing and she goes i have notes chloe for serious what is wrong with you i have notes which is vocal nodules basically what it is is the rubbing together of your vocal cords at above average rates without proper lubrication. On your vocal cords, they'll develop like a blister, almost like a polyp. They sit on your windpipe and they crush your dreams. Because of that, your vocal cords can't... Basically, vocal cords, if you don't know, the way they produce sound is they do this against each other. If the polyp forms, they can't fully rub against each other. And in that way, you'll crack more. You don't have as much control over the air in your voice. This is really, really hard because you cannot really get rid of them. They're kind of like hemorrhoids, which is, um, well, I, yeah, they're kind of like hemorrhoids. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard. And luckily I was able to recover from it and it didn't get any worse because I took a lot of time off after my career ended. And I just really focused on taking care of my vocal health because I did want to keep singing and I love singing. It was rough because I thought for a minute, I just didn't know if I was going to be able to sing the way that I used to. So with damage, with exhaustion, with everything, it just makes a person sound a lot worse when they sing. Reason number three that I said in my video was that some idols just aren't singers and this is true singing I would say is something that can't always be learned there are just some people who were never really singers and they just came into the industry singing just happened to be part of the job now on to some of the reasons that I wasn't able to mention in that video another reason I didn't really get to talk much about but I really really wanted to is because of the fact that they don't have time to train they don't have time to practice I see comments on videos of different artists and idols singing saying oh you need to lock them in a room with a vocal coach for like a month or two first of all learning is not linear so yeah lock them in a room with a vocal coach for a month it might not work it might not change anything growth is not linear you learn and then you're like oh, i don't really know and then you suddenly feel like you got better and then you're like oh, i don't know and then sometimes you'll take two steps back it's different and then you start doing a different song all of a sudden you're back down here it's all very case by case i've said this before being an idol is not a normal job you're not going and clocking in and clocking out at certain times every day you don't have a schedule you don't have a routine everything is just kind of out the window especially when you're doing promotions and everything is just so crazy you don't really have time to put into bettering yourself or working on your craft it's all just very go 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 everyone wants something from you everyone expects something from you and you need to do it now after you debut, there's no time. I think I got a vocal lesson maybe once or twice within my company after I debuted because I had requested it. And the only time we would get a vocal lesson as a group would be before we had to record for a comeback. This would only be like one lesson. Everything else was kind of up to you. There are idols and artists who take that extra time and take that extra step to do more. I would just take vocal lessons on my own time with my own money because I wanted to continue to get better. And I felt like I wasn't doing 
as well as I thought I could. But this isn't the case for everyone. Not everyone is able to have that kind of access or they don't have the kind of money to be able to do that and that's completely understandable. And sometimes these companies aren't willing to pay for another vocal lesson. I keep saying this, but yeah, it is very much like working out because your voice is a muscle. If you don't work out for a long time, you lose muscle. And that's about the same thing as your voice. Like it needs to be continually used. It needs to be warm. But it needs to be doing it in a healthy way. Also with a lot of these songs in terms of key and range, all these other aspects, your vocals are like pushed to the limit. You're so completely spent. That say whenever they do get time off, their first instinct is not that they want to get a lesson. It's that they want to sleep. They want to rest. They want to see their family. They want to see their friends. Because idols are people and they have lives too. Yeah, this is their job, but they have a life. If it's a consistent problem with an artist's performance, yes, I understand, especially if it's a concert because, you know, these fans are taking their time and spending their money to come see the artist because they love them and they want to see them live. I wouldn't say that these people get worse after they debut necessarily i would say that it's just lack of care because your body needs rest humans are not machines we need replenishment we need practice we need training there's a training period and people train for many many years or however long or however short but nothing really prepares you for idol life yeah the dancing and the singing maybe but nothing from my training really prepared me everything was so different nothing can really prepare you for being plunged into the public eye where everyone has something to say about you whether it be good or bad and with the internet especially now and the technology's gotten so advanced like the internet was supposed to be something to bring people together but if anything it's turned so many people against each other and I don't think that's technology's fault I think people get too comfortable on the internet where they don't realize that you're writing to someone else directly and just because things are written on a public platform someone is still on the other end receiving it and I know a lot of idols or artists that go through and they read all of them and they get really really hurt by it in my case I never really looked through comments I never really looked at social media or any statements about me because I know myself and I know that that would affect me very negatively and affect how I do my job. So I just chose not to do it. I take it if it's helpful criticism. If it's just straight up hate, then I'm just like, okay, whatever, you know? But imagine being like 15 and you see this rush of people saying how much they hate you and how much you suck with no reason. It's not like helpful it's just like oh they can't sing or oh they're ugly oh they're fat with no reason like they don't know you you don't know them and they're going why do they hate me so much it's such a mind-boggling concept that someone's willing to write that to a 15 year old or just anybody in general i think that's so insane because i've also gotten a lot of hate dms or like harassing people like i've gotten death threats i've gotten a lot of different things so there's a lot of things that are affecting people in that way with such a strenuous job once it all adds up yeah they're not going to sound that great the last thing that I guess this video is about is yeah, I'm giving insight, but just be kind, please. I'm not even the center of the hate in these comments that I read sometimes, and my heart hurts because I know what it's like to be on the other side of that. During my career, I got called a lot of different things. I got called fat, ugly, whatever, whatever, whatever. I got compared to a thousand other singers and people. I also just don't think we should be comparing people at all. What happened to K-pop being fun? What happened to K-pop being like, oh, I love when groups collab. Oh, they see each other so well. Oh, this is so fun. We kind of thing now it's just like fan wars all the time and like wars between the companies and someone's trying to step on somebody i don't think success is based on being better than someone else if you want to be really good at something or successful that does not mean you have to step on somebody else and i really really believe in this and this is the moral i go through with my whole life because if you're doing things well and you stick to your morals then you'll get there <laughs> i really believe this and if you don't get there then you know either it's gonna take some time or you just want to try some other things life is really short i'm like going on a huge tangent right now just because i think there's so many things that i want to say in these videos and now that i'm able to do it in a longer form video i want to speak more openly about it but this has been my two cents i hope this was helpful and gave some insight i really really wish that i had a better background but this is where my vanity is set up and this is where i get ready so just bear with me i guess yeah i want to thank you guys so much for watching i know i keep saying every single year i'm gonna upload more videos and it's literally literally halfway through the year and I haven't uploaded a single one. Now that I kind of have a gist of what I want to say and how I want to do things, I will hopefully start getting these videos up soon. Let me know in the comments if you have any other things that you'd like me to shed some light upon, give more insight about, or just other video requests that you want to see and I will do my best to get to them. Thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day and I'll talk to you guys soon. God bless. Bye!